Uh, always controversial, Tej. How's it going, man? Good, thanks. Yourselves? Yeah, all good, good, man. All good. Uh, busy day today. Obviously, well, busy day in the news as well. But you know what? Let's just get right into it, boys. Transfers. What is going on? Like, Tej, I'm, I'm going to... Ted, I'm going to let you start, because I know you've got a transfers, lot of... Transfers, transfers, news. I mean, look, I'm trying to look at the positives. The only positives I can see is the only way this shit show must be happening <laughs> is it means that the takeover must be happening. There must be movement, all this stuff. It, it, there is no way a billion-pound organisation like Manchester United can operate like... 7.3 no, billion, bro, 7.3. No, no, they can operate like a like a small, you know, like the the milkman companies that go around, like the ones, the old school ones on the van and stuff. You know, it's just an absolute shit show. I personally am hoping that my my one signing that I just want to get over the line, even if it's a loan deal, is Amrabat or whatever. I just want someone like him in the middle just to shore things up because the horrible reality is the way our players are picking up injuries. I just. Can you just imagine if we didn't have Casemiro in the middle? I know he's not been playing well, but can you just imagine we didn't have him? Literally, it'd be like a knife. Be like a knife for butter. We'd be all over the place, you know what? With if if uh, Casemiro wasn't even there, but you know what it is for me is you've gone from thirty to twenty-one million to a loan deal, whereas Nottingham Forest have put an offer for seventy million. And it's just just jump in there because I actually looked into this today. So the Nottingham Forest offer was basically, it wasn't even answered by Fiorentina, from what I understand. Again, I'm no ITK, just to put that out there. Now, Amrabat, it seems, has given his word to Man United, and more importantly to Eric Ten Hag, that he will you know, come to Man United. And I think Eric has given his word to Amrabat that I will bring you to Man United. Now, the Fiorentina situation regarding the, obviously, the whole, apparently it's going to be a loan with an obligation to buy. Now, this is a player who is out of contract in, say, 10 months' time. 30th of June is the last day of that contract. Um, So why are we doing an obligation to buy, right? Well, first of all, Fiorentina have a one-year extension that I assume they will activate. Hence, he goes from 30th of June 2024 to 30th of June 2025. We do a loan to a loan with an obligation to buy for one year, a bit like Newcastle did with um, Lewis Hall. And we would pay the fee. I don't know when do you pay the fee beforehand? Do you pay it in January? Do you pay it at the end? I don't know how that works, but either way, it goes into next year's budget, so to speak, which as we are all pretty much aware at this point that will not be a glazer budget again i've said this all the time it's a final f you to the fans to the club this is just how the glazers operate man they're just looking to stick that knife in one more time and just rip the knife out and just let us bleed it almost feels well, like they want the new owners to come in and they kind of just want the new owners to fail straight away. So that way the fans are almost like, oh, it weren't as bad as under the Glazers. Well, we all know it's a fucking been a shambles and an absolute shit show. But like I said, that's the only positive I can see from this window is the fact that it clearly means that something must be happening in the background. It clearly tells you that, you know, the owners are not thinking long term. They're thinking, you know, what, let's let's quickly make this uh, a quick exit. Not even a smooth exit. Let's make it a quick exit. <clears throat> so I'm just hoping that that's the only positive can come out of it. Looking at the season as a whole, do I still think we can get top four? Yeah, I do because I think we've got one uh, an absolutely unbelievable coach. I do think we've got a good group of players. I just think that we need a bit of lady luck on our side, and also I think the fact that other teams have strengthened, but other teams are also going to look weaker. I am not convinced at all by Liverpool's uh, 2-1 victory over Newcastle. If you actually deep dive into that game a little bit, I mean, Trent should have been off. Um, uh, Was it Botman, the defender? I I haven't seen him make two mistakes like that all last season. And he makes two all of a sudden in the space of like three, four minutes. I I I just think it's you you can't read too much into that result. Fair play to them. They got a good result. Massive, massive for them, but 
I wouldn't read into it. I'm hearing all sorts of talk today. You know, if Salah stays, they could be in for a title charge. They might get, you know, uh, Ryan Gravenbrat, Gravenbetch, whatever his fucking name is. I think it, it, it's all too early. In there. Mm. Apparently, I saw Ornstein earlier saying they've got him with the bid. Um, obviously, that was someone <laughs> we were linked with. Gravenbetch with uh, yeah, yeah. Liverpool. Yeah, Liverpool, yeah, yeah. Liverpool have gone to Bayern Munich. I don't know the structure of the deal. I just saw it briefly on Ornstein's Twitter. Um, again, that another former Eric Ten Hag player, another former Ajax player, someone we were linked with. Are we you missing something there? I, I, I don't know. It's telling me. It's telling me my my uh, my mentality is just literally saying it feels like everyone. It feels like everyone's just been told that's it. Now it's done. Accept it. Deal with it. It is what it is. You got your keeper. Um, you know, and you, you've got your striker. That's all you're getting. You know, you've had a few other departures. Accept it. New owners will come in. It's their problem. Deal with it. But you know what? If it means that, you know what? If it gets rid of the owners, so be it. I mean, we're into September practically now. October, November, December, January. It's four months. Surely by January we should have new owners in. Surely we should be able to, you know, hear from those hear from those new owners with some sort of positive you know, outlook on what the future looks like, whether it's a new stadium, whether it's a, under reconstruction, what the youth system looks like, what they're going to pump their money into just to give that fans that belief. And, and most fans will accept that. I don't think any fan is under the illusion that we're going to win the league this year. I don't think any fan is, I think the, the minority of them are split between what they reckon we'll get top four. Some of them think we won't. But I think that's on that hinges on the basis that we stay injury free. Ten Hag stays you know, keeps doing what he's doing, which is a brilliant coach. I know, you know, a lot of negativity coming out of uh, Saturday's result with Forrest. I was one of those people. But if I really break it down, you know, a results are results. And you know what? No one cares about the performance at the end of the season. It's where they finish. So it's good to get three points. And knowing that Arsenal got a little bit of a humble slice of humble pie, means anything's possible again on Sunday. Uh, I don't think we'll get a result, but anything's possible. I'm just, um, I'm just... In, in terms of, obviously, you're hearing a little bit more about what's going on behind the scenes. The tour, I want to just touch up on it. There's a lot of talk coming out around the tour and how many games were played and the sort of like the travel, the mileage and stuff. A lot of a lot of people are saying that, that that's also been a contributing factor. Now, I'm no fitness expert, but I, as you boys know, I like to study the science behind the players, see what they get up to in their, you know, in their personal fitness journeys. Is it a case that these players are just fatigued? Is it a case that they need five, six weeks to get going? What is it? You know, with the preseason, how many games did we play in total? So we had two when we came back from the tour. I think two before the tour. Was it a one? So we had Leeds. Leeds, uh, Atletico Bilbao. You had Athletic the, you had the Arsenal. Uh, did we not have one before games? Leeds? I think we had about five. Was it six, Red Bull? Seven, was it eight, nine or something? Yeah. I think nine, we had one before eight, seven, we eight. went away. Yeah. Then we had Leeds. Yeah. Then we went to America. So it was Wrexham, Dortmund, That's Madrid, it. Arsenal, and then Bilbao and mm-hmm. oh, the Saturday RC Lons. That's it. And I'm yeah. I'm sure there was another one in there. So, so how 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 many is that in total? If we oh, do seven, have another one, which seven, I'm sure eight. we do, there's nine. Nine. So it's a significant amount of preseason games, yeah. but it's not necessarily the games. It's more so the travel, the impact these is having on some of the players. Bearing in mind, these players were in four competitions all the way up until about February last year. Significant. And there you wasn't know, much rotation, was there? Last not at all, not at all. And, and maybe, maybe, you know what? At the end of the day, this is why we're not football coaches. Maybe, and maybe, maybe I'd love to hear Riz's views on this when he, whenever he decides <laughs> to come back on the podcast. I know he's still angry. He's still looking for his kebab. Uh, but um, See, he's still in cool down, bro. He's still he's still, he's still on, in uh, cool, cool down. down but no, I, I think there might be a bit bit of a, a bit of traction there in terms of worth studying that sort of area. I know it might sound like I'm making excuses for him, but I, I'd like to think you know, especially not Arsenal, but more so Brighton you know, rest and then international week, the, you know, we're starting to see some of these players really, you know, take shape, get a bit of a rest and, and stake form. And 
I know you're going to laugh, but S- Sunday is a game where I-, I genuinely would be playing Maguire. I'd be bringing Maguire back into the fold. I mean, I'd be chomping at the bit. And Maguire had a good preseason. You know what, he should Ted, be in that team. I actually, I actually back you on that on that point. You know, because I we hate are, to say this, we are, but I agree. we are, we actually are at the Emirates. Let's play a back three. Let's see how yeah, it goes. Why not? Why not? Why not? And also, look again. It's going to sound like the Maguire, you know, Halo again. But wouldn't it be nice knowing that flipping, you know, the set pieces? We've got someone there who's guaranteed to win the ball. He doesn't. He doesn't miss the ball on set pieces. He always. He's the first one. He's always the first one to head the ball. And I'm telling you, away from home, and Ollie, he's prolific. He was so good. And I'm telling you, I think we should play him on Sunday. But he'll probably play Dallo, and I wouldn't be surprised if he plays flipping um, Victor and uh, Martinez. But you know, let's just for me. I want to see. Da- I want to see Dallo in that left back role. I think. He I think really he will well be. I think week. he's got no choice. I think he's got no choice. But I mean, one thing we haven't talked about. I know we're going to get on to transfers. Is uh, is uh, Mister Cucurella? Is, is that a wind <laughs> up? I'm not. I'm not looking down. Boys, speak your mind, boys. I'll give you my thoughts. But what's going on? on? I, I I don't know what to believe. I, don't, I I still can't believe it. I mean, I absolutely hammered Chelsea fans when I found out they paid sixty million for him. But we actually then, get it, we actually going to pay a loan fee for the guy. Like, I don't, wait, was it sixty? Yeah, they paid 50, 60 million for him. Ooh. And uh, yeah, and I thought it was a ploy by Man City again, bump up the price, distraction, get, let Chelsea go in, and they did it. But turns out we're in for him and maybe he'll do a job for us but I, I'm telling you that guy cannot defend he cannot yeah, defend to save his life yeah I like even I'm basically against the signing of Kukurela but if Ten Hag wants him he'll that's it him. I'm going to take the place of Ted right now I am for this <laughs> signing purely on the basis <laughs> of I don't think we can judge him on his time at Chelsea yeah um, obviously he's only been there yeah, one year then, it's clearly not worked but the thing is I've so, also, he okay, so he's been he's at his second season at Chelsea, but can he actually get his form back when he was at Brighton? That's the this question. is what I'm thinking is like if we bring him in on loan, we pay the three million or whatever it is. Look at this point, I don't care how much we pay for transfers, I don't care how much we pay for loans, I don't we'll care what we pay the players because it's not my flipping money, it's the Glazers' money, it's the club's money. I just want it, mm. I, just, I just want to see it getting spent. But do you not feel like it stinks of desperation as well? Do you not? Do you not oh no, one hundred percent. It stinks of it. It is literally that guy at the club at like three, four in the morning, desperate just to get a cuddle <laughs> or something. It is absolutely <laughs> cringe, isn't you it? You sound I mean, like you've been there on. before, Tej. No comment. No comment. I know. If, <laughs> I know. I know. I know. A few people have. But what I'm saying is, it, it just reeks of desperation and. Oh, God. Like I said, for me, the main one, and I am desperate for him, is Amrabat, just because I know that he'll do a job for us. He'll fill the void with other players being injured. And you know what? We can change up the formation if we need to. But again, I said it a couple of weeks ago in terms of changing up. He's going to have to. And Sunday, he will have to change it up. And hopefully, you know what? It might might work out as a bit of a blessing. But in, in terms of United as a whole, I don't think anybody fully expected this transfer window to be amazing on the basis of what's going on with the new ownership. But again, standard Glazers have dragged their feet. Um, one last sort of shit show goodbye to the fans. And also, what the what, can we talk for a minute about that? Um, and the fans staying behind for an hour after the game. I mean, 1958. G- genuinely, I get that. I get the effort, but they didn't achieve nothing. And I'll be honest with you, even the news channels, when they're reporting on it, it almost felt like it was embarrassing. And I was like, what What the fuck? What the hell is going on? I mean, seriously, whoever put that together, you might as well just said, you might as well just get a nice little sign, stick it outside and said, would you please leave our football club if you don't mind? Fucking embarrassing. I mean, I'm not saying we can fucking do anything better, but it's literally like it's a waste of time, waste of energy. I feel sorry for the people who probably travelled that far and have to wait an hour. Well, you know what? They might have missed the traffic, but I thought it was embarrassing. And they reported it on BBC after. And basically, it was literally the headline was like, fans protested against the owners. They stayed for one hour after the game. Okay. I just want to jump in there. I When the 1958 mentioned this idea of a sit-in protest, uh, firstly, I want to echo that 
as the Brown Monday, we do support the movement of Glazers out. Just because we don't agree with certain methods does not make us in any way, shape or form against any other fan group or anything like that. But when they mentioned this sit-in protest and staying behind for an hour, I thought to myself, you're already in the ground. You've already scanned your little QR code. You've probably already bought a drink or a snack or your kids bought a chocolate bar or you've bought them a match day program or something of that sort, right? You have already given them your money. They have already won. You know what it is? It's is it like not more effective it's like to sitting. empty the ground? It, it, to me, to me, like... that that would that would hurt them more. And to say, just don't turn up, just don't turn up. Say right as a collective group, not this fifteen minutes. I know people are saying, but they want to watch the game. No, you want to hurt these Glazers. You, you don't turn up to matches. You you put a pro. And the real the people who really want to make a statement, they'll they'll plan it. They'll say, you know what, Crystal Palace, thirty September. No one's attending the game. Anyone who's got a season ticket, put on there, not attending the game. Or say 45 minutes. 45 minutes of football, and let's make a real statement. Not, I'm not saying go smash up stuff or whatever, but that that's something would probably be a bit more than, oh, let's just stay behind one hour after the game, where security are probably loving it because they're probably getting time and a half. They're going to get overtime. Thinking, yeah, I was just going to say, security yeah. getting paid overtime. Yeah. yeah exactly. probably getting paid overtime. If anything, if anything, the only thing 1958 have done, they've, they've obviously boosted the wages of the staff. They're probably on minimum wage anyway. So fair play. Actually, you know what? I'll give them that. I'll, I'll credit them for one good thing that they've done. But I oh, genuinely, like, like, if they're listening to this, I really do hope you look come up with a bit more of a better strategy than that. Because I'm telling you, I, I wouldn't like to send you into any, any high profile business meetings, I tell you. But uh, it is what it is. We'll start talking about 1958 before I end up with a brick in my, brick in my window. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, let's yeah. move on from that. But, let's yeah, move on. Let's, let's, let's keep it transfer. Yeah, keep it transfer. Yeah, let's go back to transfers. Because I, I was about to do I wanna... a deep dive on Mark Cucurella here. No, I'm going to turn it to you for a second. Yeah, Cucurella. If we can get look. him at his bright form. Yeah. If he can find a way to replicate that. I'm all for it. Now, yes, it's three million. Like I said, I don't care how much we pay anymore. Because yeah. end of the day, we're gonna pay three million. And in three years' time, Sky Sports gonna write it down as a 20 million pound loan fee, and it's the most expensive loan of all time, because that's what they do. Yeah. Cause you know, they love to talk about Man United. We're the only way they're United clips. will United be paying his wages, because I heard he's on about two hundred certain grand a week as well. I believe it'll be fifty fifty. Yeah. You sure? I'd check. I don't think it I will d- be. I don't I know this better. again. Not IT. If I'm Chelsea, 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 Chelsea's Chilwell is an absolute made out of glass. He always gets injured, and the fact that they're letting him go, I don't think they'd let him go unless you know are going to see. Cover that all doesn't make. That's what doesn't make sense to me. Chilwell's very injury prone. No, but this is what I love about Poch. This is why I do rate Pochettino. He's got youth there. He's got some young talent. He'll he'll play them. He did it at Spurs. He did it at Southampton. He does not care. He will have a group of individuals who will give it 110%. And if they don't, they won't play. And you know what? I admire that. I do also hope that I thought I saw that in Ten Hag first season. And I did see elements of it. But I feel like the the scrutiny and the the pressure got a bit too much. And he had to play certain players. I'm hoping now he's built that credit in the bank that he can afford to say, you know what, fuck you, you ain't playing. You, you, <laughs> that was disgusting. I'm waiting for I'm waiting for Rashford to get dropped, but yeah, it is what it is. It ain't gonna happen. Rashford can do whatever he wants. He can, you know, he, he can probably go a whole season without scoring and still get in the team. But it is what it is. Half Alex, half already watching, no. listening, thinking, how dare you talk about my boyfriend? How dare you? <laughs> oh, I'm man. joking, Harpo. I'm joking. <laughs> listen, listen, right? Yeah. All jokes aside, if we can get Cucurella and he hits the ground running, why not make it a permanent move? Luke Shaw's made a glass. When he's not made a glass, he's up and down in weight. And you spend two years trying to get him back into shape. Like, do you know what I mean? Why not try that? And then you've got the other side of things whereby you have Tyrell Malassia, who by all accounts had a very good first season as a sort of backup rotation option. Hmm. And I saw something today that we don't know how long he's injured for. Now, I'm sorry, but get him to the Greater Manchester 
uh, North Manchester General or whatever it is, or Trafford General, get him in one of the MRI things, get the scan done, get him to a specialist, and get a time frame. <laughs> My mum's Asian. She could probably tell you how much, how long he's out for. I mean, she'd be like, oh, just bit out of some hand on it. Hey, don't hey, hey, don't ever knock that remedy. That remedy has been uh, has been successful for many hundreds of years. So let's uh, let's not knock that remedy. Oh, Generations, generation. Haldi, mate, Haldi, mate. But uh, look, yeah, 1958 boys might couldn't do with some Haldi and Dolls <laughs> after their flipping protest. I'm sure that would have warmed the old cockles at bay. But um, hey, yo, going back to um, going back to other transfers, I think the key thing is look, we need to get Amrabat over the line. If it's the you know, Ryan Giza in the middle, if it happens, it happens. It doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, I want to know though. It, what's what's the story with Marshall? Is he going to be just extended for another year? Then is is that how it works? What what does anyone know? I believe so. But if you look at it from the from who's going to don't come talk in, about the doctor. Don't talk about no, the no, doctor, no, no, please. No no, 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 no. Because if you look at who might come in, you got Kukurella, you got the new keeper, that Turkish lad, and then yeah. you've got the. Amrabat. So if we can get three players in, would you be happy with it overall? I wouldn't. So I'm Do happy you know with the you know volume I heard? of my players. Mate was, yeah, my, my, I heard something. Sorry, after, after that. I, I heard something. No, I, I heard that. I heard that Martial. Oh my god! I heard that he got another bonus. Um, from United through through his original deal through Monaco after. A certain level of competing within Champions League, certain years of um, certain level of appearance, certain amount of appearances. I heard they got himself another bonus. It might, it might be mean, true, you know. It might be true. And he's on, and he's on two hundred and fifty grand a week at the moment. Mm. It what could be f- true because didn't he make his three hundredth club appearance at the weekend? What the fuck? What the fuck is going on? <laughs> what the fuck is this mess? It's a fucking shambles. This is a shambles. Honestly, what's the song they sing about it? Fifty million down the drain. And it just is. You know what's really sad though? If you watch some of his clips from like when he joined, there's that season under Van Howe, right? And I kid you not, yeah, yeah, I kid you not. Forget the day before it. You watch him, he looks solid. Players are bouncing off him. I just don't get how one player is the has gone backwards. He hasn't developed. He's gone. There's one game. There's one game that I remember of Martial, and that's the. A semi-final against Everton. The guy, well, he, was yeah, well, he wins it for us. Yeah, yeah, he was unplayable yeah. in that game, and that game was like, you know what, this guy is a must, must starter. But the guy, yeah, you're right. He's gone. He's got literally gone backwards. Like he's dropped down a hundred levels, and it's like, please tell me how, how how Sancho's going away for three months on a on a on a private training course to sort himself out physically, mentally. What are they doing to Martial behind the scenes? Genuinely, I, can, I would I love to know. I've got a theory on the Marshall situation. So, Marshall arrived don't, don't, Hall, don't mention right? the doctor. Don't mention the doctor. I'm not, oh, bro, don't worry. I'm not mentioning <laughs> the doctor. Don't worry. The, the, I, I want him gone. I, I'm not willing to give him any more chances. But Marshall arrived under Louis Van Hal, yeah? Yeah. He had, obviously, a relatively decent season, breakout against Liverpool, all of that nonsense. And then... We've got this manager in Portuguese fella named Jose Mourinho. Yeah. And Jose Mourinho bought with him Zlatan Ibrahimovic, yep. Paul Pogba, Henrik Mkhitaryan, Eric Bailly. On paper, fantastic window. Now, what did he do with Zlatan? He gave Zlatan the number nine and he ripped it off Anthony Martial and gave Martial the 11. Hmm. Okay. Then we go one step further. Zlatan's up front, Marshall and Rashford are left wing, which was fantastic. I don't re- re- uh, I don't know if you guys remember that start to that season where one would start games, the other would come on, and they would Him both and Rashford just be rotating and stuff. Him and, and Rashford be fantastic. rotating. And then we went into January. Yeah. And we signed some guy who played a piano. So if you're Anthony Martial, you were once the European Golden Boy. Correct me if I'm wrong, anyone. He won the Golden Boy Award or whatever they call it. Um, you went from Monaco to Manchester United, 
with the clothes, with the clothes that if he wins the Ballon d'Or, oh, you know, I'd have to pay him one of Yeah, there was that famous Ballon d'Or clothes, so, you know, that Ed Woodward special. No. Cheers, Ed. We haven't had to pay that yet. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, this, wow! This guy literally probably like two, the two thousand person on the list of Bondo. Yeah, no, I, 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 no, 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 no! Not even two thousand. I'm saying. I don't, yeah, I don't think there's, it makes there's championship players better than Martial. There is championship players who add more value to a team than Martial. I put the Luton players... lads who got promoted above him. Did you watch Salford last night against Leeds or any any highlights of it? There was players from Salford's team that add more <laughs> value than Anthony Martial. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, g- genuinely, there's no justifying anything at the moment. I just don't understand what is going on there. And I think off the pitch, he must be the nicest so, guy in the world or so he Ted, must have are you some serious chat. Ted, Ted, are you saying Martial is not even fit to play for Salford City? I wouldn't say fit. I'd, I'd say he he's a glimpses player. He, he it, it's, it depends on his mood. If he fancies five, ten minutes, a little run around, he'll do it. But his his attitude, his body language, it just stinks. And I just you know don't who get how a player who Mario Balotelli. All the talent in the world, zero yeah. application, zero yeah. attitude. Yeah. But, but you know Balotelli what? I, also had injury I would problems. actually say, I would actually say Balotelli was has done quite well in his career. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's got a banging agent. That's why. Yeah. Isn't C- he a couple of league titles? Players? Yeah. Yeah, a couple of league titles and whatnot. But, I mean, look, we, we could spend... I don't want to turn this into a bashing session. Any idea. I think the key thing to remember is it's not been a good window. The only positives are that hopefully new ownership is coming. I think, you know, the reality is we've played three games. We've won two, lost one. It could be a lot worse. However, Sunday going into it, not many people are feeling confident. So let's just wait and see what happens. But again, I still think even if we lose, we'll beat Brighton. We'll paint over the cracks. And then you know what happened? We might we might get a result against Burnley, but then this is how stupid and unreliable this these these set of players are. I can imagine us beating Arsenal, beating Brighton, and then going to Burnley and getting smashed three nil or two nil. It's just so unpredictable. There is no level of consistency with that. these players. There is no level of consistency with these players. And the sad reality is the quicker new ownership, the quicker the mood is lifted, the quicker these players get going. But I, I do want to talk about one other thing briefly is um, is Bruno. A lot of back and forth with him and what's, what, he's, what he stands for. Let, let's just be crystal clear on this. Bruno is our best player by a country mile. He is unbelievable. His stats speak volume for the type of guy he is. He's an unbelievable player. There is question marks around his leadership, and I think that boils down to, you know, him as a person. He he, he, and that's the the thing. Yeah, he did all right at the weekend. But the reality is, I think Simon Jordan did a good piece on him. The the reality is, he's not a long-term, full-time leader for us. I think there's a major attitude adjustment that needs to happen there. But as a player, I think he's phenomenal, and I think he's been brilliant. It's been amazing to have him. But you know what? I'm going to go back to this guy again because I feel like pressure should be on him. Everyone should be looking at Rashford and thinking, hang on a minute, you are the golden boy. You are the main man. You are now that geezer earning 370 grand a week or whatever. You should be taking that captaincy. You should be saying, I'm United. United's in my veins. I'm going to lead this team. My body language it stinks because I don't. I play up front. I'll tell you what, I'm going to play in right back. I'll play left back and I'll show how much this club means to me. And I'll, I'll break my body, destroy myself for these fans, for United. Like someone like Roy Keane would do. And at the moment, I don't see any of that. I don't see any heart in him. And there's talk of him breaking up with his missus. He's got a few off the field problems again. Shock. But how many times do you want to account for it? Some of the best players in the world had problems off the pitch and they still made it count on the pitch. It's, it's honestly, he can't keep excusing his behaviour. If he has another poor game at Arsenal on the weekend, he needs to be dropped. He needs to be dropped. And you know what? Sancho's not amazing, but give him a go. Imagine the boost that will give to Sancho and say, you know what? Rashford's not playing well. You know what? Here's three, four games. Show us what you can do. We've paid you 75 million. You show us what you're all about. Because I'll be honest. I don't it's understand not why they haven't already done that. And one thing that really, really sort of getting on my nerves this season is Sancho played that false nine all throughout preseason, yeah? Rashford played on the left. But anytime Sancho's come on, he's gone on the wing. He's not. So what was this whole thing of Sancho? Like, just play him in the false nine. He did a job. I, I don't understand it, but look, let's, like you said, let's not turn this into a bashing session. 
We've got a few more transfers to go I through. Think I think we've already gotten into a bashing centre. <laughs> <laughs> with literally Riz everything. turns around me part two, innit? <laughs> now, you know what? I, I, I think Ted might need a spin off, you know, spin off little uh, series. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah. Turn with I mean, Ted. I mean, you've literally come in and you've bashed every single thing that we've, we've spoke about. And you know what? It's made me laugh. I, I've had a, me personally today, I've had a tough day and stuff, but <laughs> it's literally been like you've made my day. Uh, honestly, you've made my day. I'm glad I've added some value to uh, someone's day. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, Marshall's listening, and he might think, you know what? Before I um, go out on Sunday, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move a little bit more. I'm going to try a little bit harder. And you know what? When the ball comes to me, I'm not going to get like a, uh, a little fairy, whatever. Fucking honestly, man. I'm. I got a wedding on Saturday, and that wedding on Saturday, I'm going to attend. Uh, hopefully, have a good time, and I'm just hoping I wake up on Sunday ready get prepared for it and they just they make a good account of themselves and you know what last year we lost 3-2 yeah and we took the lead didn't they score in the last minute as well and, and no they scored there. in the last they scored in the last four or five minutes but it was it was well deserved by Arsenal they outplayed us they were the better team but you know what half I heard heard stat, we, we played well I, I heard a stat it was that Casemiro has never started against Arsenal for United is that true because I know the first game at Old Trafford, he wasn't. He was unveiled as a player. The game against Emirates, was he on the bench or was he suspended? Suspended. He was suspended, weren't he? Yeah. So, was, uh, so many Emirates now, he's probably going to start. Yeah. And also, one more is thing to talk about. Split? I don't know if you guys have been watching, clocking on, but the way the league are handing out yellow cards and suspensions... I'm telling you, it's is, it is getting ridiculous. I know they're trying to stop the time wasting, but Jesus, I'm thinking, do you remember where, when, did, where do did they draw Casimiro? the line? Do you remember Casemiro literally just tried to choke hold that kid? On the pitch? <laughs> and then he wasn't even choke hold. It was like, um, <laughs> oh, really? it was like the got... Undertaker, wasn't it? You remember yeah, Kane, yeah, yeah, an yeah. Undertaker back yeah. in the day? It was like I've that, wasn't feeling, it? I've got a feeling we might have a repeat of that with Casemiro and Martinez. I've got a feeling. Uh, and, and that's what well, the just game go straight, won, just go straight for uh, Rice's throat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I mean, it could be one party, on Rice, one on Havertz. It, it could be party, um, but I think that's where the game will be won and lost the midfield. But I think it'll probably be a one-one draw. I bet you on Sunday there's a pen. I bet you there will be a penalty on Sunday. Oh, one hundred percent, hundred percent. There'll be a penalty on Saka Sunday. and Martinelli can't stay on their feet. Honestly, there'll be a penalty on on, on Sunday, and I t- I'll tell you what. <sighs> I'll just don't know what Rashford's going to turn up. Let's wait and see, shall we? Let's wait and see what Rashford turns up. Because if Rashford no. turned up, if Rashford turned up and absolutely showed he's the man, we'd be tuning up within the first half an hour. You know what Akil Honestly. said the other day? What? We need to bring back Jesse Lingard for one game. Yeah. Jesse Lingard do a better job than some and of these players. Just have him moment. dance all over the Emirates again. <laughs> yeah. That was a pure murkage. I actually watched that game with the Harps. It was our football Christmas party. And I just remember literally thinking, oh my God, how have we dicked on these guys so easily? It's 3 1 in the end, weren't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then, then Pogba, no, good Pogba spoiled it, didn't he, by getting a red card. And then we had Man City the following week. Yeah, yeah. But if you think of it as well, we've we've actually had some great goals at Emirates as well. But we you got the Ronaldo, Ronaldo free kick was it? Um, Nani's goal from Ooh, that yeah. angle. Yeah, but forget um, that. We've had great results against Rooney, Arsenal. Park, over the years. Yeah, we've had yeah. a phenomenal record against Arsenal, and uh, genuinely, I just I hope we make a good account of ourselves. Let's wait and see what happens. But but I think we've t- spoke about a few things. We spoke about transfers. We spoke about a few of the people that we all know. We spoke about uh, some interesting topics. I think uh, I think I'm going to have to leave it there before I end up offending some more people. We can keep going if you want, man. We have got one more transfer to talk about, by the way. Go on then. So this this goalkeeper domino effect. Henderson goes to Palace, or maybe doesn't go to wherever he's going, he's going. And Altai Bayin Dia, the goalkeeper that we're signing. 
I don't know. Isn't confirmed. I think nobody knows. I think nobody knows who these goalkeepers are, really. And anyone tells you, oh, yeah, he's good. He's... Really? Are you going to believe you what they're you saying? You know who told me he was good? Who? My 11-year-old nephew who made that reel we put out on socials. So shout out my nephew because that was class. Shout but out to your nephew then. Fair play. Literally, like, the, the only other reason I know that deal is done is because Fred gave an interview and Fred said, I told him he's going to a great team and I congratulated him. You so know what? You why know what? has it I not think, been done yet? I think when Fred talks, you listen because I think if you look at when Fred and Casemiro spoke as well, Casemiro signed for United, didn't he? Yeah, I was going to say, wasn't it Fred that Fred and Casemiro share an agent or Fred spoke to Casemiro they and spoke, they Casemiro did that yeah, they spoke to interview with there. TNT Brazil and he says, oh, Casemiro's yeah. coming to United. Or something but like no that. one knows yet, but, but the thing is, this keeper, no one knows if he's going to be good because we've also heard Onana might even go to the African nations. Of no, Cup. no, please, please, yeah. please. He's coming, yeah. Do African Cup of Nations got delayed. I was going to talk about that, actually. It got delayed last year because of the World Cup. It's definitely happening this year. He's definitely going. It happens uh, every year, man. It, it, I swear it's, it happens it's, every year. Nah, it just feels that way. It doesn't. But look, it is what it is. I personally think Hendo sh- should be forced to stay. And I still think he can add value to this team. And I think yeah, he's a good Ted, keeper. He's on 150 good grand a week and he's just sitting on the bench. Yeah, but the thing is, what Afsal, who the hell would you have? Dude, look who what Sancho's... Have yeah, sorry, Akio. Basically, who would you have? Well, once Onana goes on the plane, you've got Heaton and this Turkish kid. Who are you going to put in net? Exactly. Turkish you put, kid? You put... Nah, you're risking it again, though, ain't you? That's, that's you know what? I would, rather, I would rather get De Gea on loan for that month. Oh, no I chance. Mean, no he's, more. He's, he's no. not even got a club, so... No, we can, forget yeah, De Gea. Bring him back. Forget, yeah. forget you, know, you know, these early podcasts about how he was a legend and that. It makes me <laughs> sick to my stomach, honestly. Ah, bro, he's, he's, he's achieved a lot, man. Come on. What? Achieved Let's what? Let's pay our respects to Dave. One league title, uh, one FA Cup and uh, two Carabao Cups and a Europa League. Don't, don't tell me he's achieved a lot. He hasn't achieved... Nothing. R- he's achieved record, nothing. He's given me the sheets. biggest. He's given me the biggest <laughs> headache known to man. You know, this is another name. He is, Ted, Spanish, you, bro. he is the Spanish migraine. Honestly, Spanish stress. I'm telling you, I can't deal with him. Fucking like legend. Word for migraine, De Gea. I tell you, he's a legend. The Amazon parcel delivery guy who turns up on time every fucking day and delivers the parcel. He's a legend, not De Gea. I think I, I think I'm done. I think I'm done. I'll, I'm out. I'm out. Love you. Ted, I you love later. you, bro. <laughs> See you later. I can't handle it. No oh, more legend man. talk. Peace out. Peace, man. Nice one. Thank you. Right, that guys. Was, you know what? Oh my days. That was uh, that was eventful. We had Tej doing Tej things. Aki, you know how you have um, the other things that like these really intelligent people speak up. Ted talks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When can we have a Ted Talk spin-off? This is what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? I, you know what? I su- listen, viewers, listeners, do you want a Ted spin-off? If you do, comment it, tweet us, tweet the hell out of Ted. Annoy him. He's not big on socials, but you know what I mean? He, he, do, he deserves a bit of love, man. Right? He's a bit Have, have you noticed so much today? Love. Absolutely. Have you noticed so much today? I've not even spoke at all today. I've literally oh, just I've, listened. I've been too busy laughing. <laughs> I've just listened. I've tried to, the to guy. jump in here and there, but I've just been too busy laughing at him. But you know what? Absolutely love the guy. Like he's literally just yeah. Whoa, no, no whoa. Words. whoa, Go on. Chelsea, Tottenham, and now Brighton. Interested in Ansu Fati. You know what? I think he goes to Chelsea. As that surprise signing they're talking about. Who are Chelsea going to surprise you with? They've got like 50 players. Have you not seen that stuff that Fabrizio, Fabrizio said? They were, About Chelsea what? are working on a surprise signing. But no, but this is my point. They pulled out world record fees after world record fees. They've spent a billion in about nine months. What's the surprise? Yeah. The only surprise would be they bring back Diego Maradona, God rest his soul. Like, what are they trying to do? You know, like, I don't know, it's, uh, 
Look, Chelsea a bit of a weird situation with their nine-year contracts and stuff. Um, I think it is a bit of a... I don't know. Apparently, UEFA are going to look into it and then UEFA are going to sort of change the loopholes. I don't think that's going to affect Chelsea because it'll be like, oh, well, that was done on the previous ruling, blah, 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 whatever. I think we're going to buy Cucurella off him. I think they're going to sell Lukaku next season to Roma. So that's a guaranteed 60 million there minimum. Um, I can see them selling a couple of other lads. And I can see them being perfectly fine in terms of FFP. But we all know FFP is a myth anyway. But yeah, man, Aki, you actually mentioned to me this morning. You had a bit of news. Yeah, yeah what it is, um, what Tedge was saying, the takeover and everything, that's literally just one of the things that's around the corner. Um, and well, one thing that people probably won't even come in the media and everything was that Darcy Glazer and her husband, they've got a lot of investment in the Middle East. I think everyone who's got a brain knows that. Uh, and there's one thing that remind happened. the viewers who Darcy is, by the way. She's the one of the Glazer siblings, the only she's sister. the third largest shareholder. Second. No, yeah, Second. third, 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 my, my bad, third, yeah. Um, so yeah, but she literally holds the keys to everything. Um, if you want to put it in some perspective, but what's happened in the last few days was one of her investments in the Middle East has literally been thrown out by the Middle East. Um, and I think it's, for me, in my opinion, for me, I, I think it's a message going to him saying, don't underestimate us, who we are in the Middle East, or what we do, don't fuck with us. Do you know what I mean? Because you've played us in the leading up to the talks and everything. Now we're going to do the same thing to you, but here's a little gift. That investment is not going to happen. You've been kicked out, it's gone, you're done. But further investment, yeah, let us do what we need to do. We might even think about it. I think that's the message going towards Darcy and her husband um, about them releasing investors. But you know what? Um, no doubt Darcy's going to relay that back to um, head conjured in charge, Joel. And you got a little rat face. Well, not a rat I don't face. know which one's which, bro. Bonny One's got a rat man. flipping a ponytail. One looks like a flipping bowling ball. I don't care which mm. one's which. I never took the time to know and learn because I couldn't give two shits. Quite before frankly. you wrap up, before you wrap up, Arthur, I just want to say. Um, Regarding my tweet about Sheikh Jassim and the 92F, you, obviously you know what it is because as oh, a team, yeah. we've, we've spoke about it and everything. It's, it's, it's in big. the works, people. It's in the it's works. In, it's in the works. It's big. It's not news. It's not an announcement. It's literally a surprise for every follower, for every fan that has connected to us, um, that has followed us, that have supported us, that have basically shown us love. Um, it's just our way of saying thank you very much. And we will be doing a massive giveaway um, regarding this surprise. So I'm not going to say what it is. We haven't even said those words, followers, subscribe or whatever. Do you know what I mean? I mean, but we have. But... We, ha we have, but not to a certain point where we we're begging it. Now, what I'm going to say is the giveaway is going to involve everyone that subscribed, followed, and everything. Um, so if you do want to get involved, um, they're going to be dropping teasers soon because at the moment it's currently in the works. We've got a lot of things going on behind the scenes. Um, a lot of things from actually, you know what? I'm not going to actually, actually say what it is. Yeah, let's, let's, gonna, uh, let's keep gonna, things back. Let's keep yeah, things back. we've got a lot of surprises coming through, a lot of major content coming through. You just need to basically have some patience and with us, we are currently working hard behind the scenes. Plus, we are obviously working our normal jobs, day jobs and everything. But obviously, as I said, 
as I've spoke to the team and everything, um, it's a big surprise and we are going to be doing a big, big giveaway. And to be in a shot to win, you're going to have to be obviously subbed and followed. Um, 